Hi, this is Magic Word. I thought I'd do something a little bit different this time. So if you have an interest in tarot cards, you're probably watching this video for one of two reasons. Either you're curious about the tarots and would like to learn more about how to use them, or you want to know how a tarot reader uses them for you. What is a tarot reading and how can it benefit you? First, I'd like to say a little bit about the cards and then what the reader does. Tarot cards are used by people who are intuitive or psychic guides to visualize and describe a set of circumstances and events. They look at each card and at correlations between the cards. A typical tarot deck is 78 cards and each card has a descriptive image with specific meanings. A studied tarot reader will be familiar with the general interpretation for each card. I won't get into great deal for this video, but there is a separation within the deck known as the Major and Minor Arcana cards. The 56 cards of the Minor Arcana have some similarities to common playing cards. There are four suits, plus it has four extra court cards. Uh, this part of the tarot may explain lesser events and readings or describe influences and personal relationships. Major Arcana has 22 cards and they are highly symbolic with scenes of one or more persons involved in some kind of activity. When a Major Arcana cards appear in your reading, it's usually predominant and has some deep significance and maybe a greater purpose in your reading. The suits that are in the minor arcana are cups, swords, wands, and pentacles or coins. In this particular one you see a couple with cups and it indicates something of a marriage or a bond between two people. Cups themselves are similar to hearts in playing cards. Um, it's a water sign. It represents feelings, emotions. Also, um, it's representative of Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces. Swords, and in this case you see sword piercing the heart, are typically conflict cards in a reading. And they're similar to um, spades. It's an air sign, has to do with mindset, uh, conflict, thoughts, intellect, and it's related to Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius. Wand cards, and in this case you see somebody that's um, apparently been through a battle and looks like he's come out successful, although somewhat um, bruised and beaten. Wands are the same as club cards. Um, it's a fire sign. It has to do with energies, action, uh, power, career, a creative individual. And it relates to Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius. Pentacles are coin cards. And here you see somebody who obviously has a lot of money and is distributing the wealth. That's kind of a form of generosity. Those are the same as diamonds. Um, it's an earth sign has to do with material wealth, finances, um, anything that has to do with, with money or prosperity. The signs uh, that it relates to are Virgo, Capricorn, and Taurus. I like the Rider Waite deck and it is really popular because all of the cards are represented with pictures. And some tarot decks, uh, the minor arcana is simply pips, so you'd see Ten of some kind of uh, figure or image, like a cup or um, a coin. Now, the major arcana, and there's 22 in the deck, are a lot more familiar to most people. They are typically cards with a person in it that is uh, doing some kind of activity or several people, and they always have, well, not always, but they usually have uh, the name of what the card is on it, like the high priestess, the lovers. The Death card, a lot of people are familiar with that. The Hermit, the Hanged Man, and the Magician. This one's um, 
quite well known for the writer deck. Tarot cards in a reading are drawn and positioned in a specific sequence. In the progression of the cards, um, they also relate to each other and that expands their original meanings. So the reader interprets the relative position of the tarots to understand the combination of card meanings. Wheel of Fortune, uh, this right here is uh, incoming events that typically are um, energetic, an activity of some sort. So it could be somebody's gambling, and um, in this case there's, let's see if we can pull another card. Okay, the Ten of Cups. Um, that represents um, um, an incoming of emotions, and uh, it's, so you'd say in a, something like this, a relatively, would mean that it's going to be uh, probably a winning proposition, whatever it is. So those cards together, the meanings do expand. Um, you may also want to know that um, every reading reveals a predominant situation and a life influence that are unique to you. The cards are chosen by chance and laid out, and it will only pertain to you. As a tarot reader, this is kind of how I would describe a personal experience with the tarot. Your life, uh, which is a path you travel, contains a trace of your destination, and discovering that trace is what reveals your future prospects. It's very similar to having a guide to map where you have been and what to expect ahead. This is how the cards define your past, your present, and your likely future. Some things you should understand about the tarot is that the cards themselves are benevolent. They have no remarkable magic on their own. Um, your reader uses intuitive skills to observe the tarot that chance has produced and to visualize their significance for you. It's a simple process of reading the cards. Also, it's particularly important to stress that understanding the sequence and the correlation of your tarot cards only reveals what to expect when the future advances without any purposeful change on your part. So the key benefit in a tarot reading is awareness of choices you can make that will alter your future to some degree. Tarot cards won't tell you what to do, but an exceptional guide might suggest changes that are to your advantage. So even if you cannot entirely prevent an unwanted event, you can at least prepare for the likely outcome. Um, and as you learn about your potential future, you'll want to improve your chance for success and be able to recognize what will positively influence your life. So you become alert to expected events and what may influence your, de your decisions. Um, that's the significant benefit for you. Anyway, I thought while I was discussing the tarot with you, I might take a moment to show you some tarot decks. Um, some of you out there may have discovered that you have a talent for reading or an interest and would like to know a little bit more. Uh, there might be somebody out there who might have an interest in having a reading themselves. Or you may just be a little bit curious about the cards. So I have some of my favorite decks here. One that I've used in a couple of readings that I have my videos on is the Visconti Tarot. They're lovely tarot. They're embossed gold. I hope you can see that. They're a very good size in hand, so they're really easy to handle. And they have just enough slickness so that they're easy to um, use in a, in a reading. So that's one of my favorite decks right there. This one, some of you may know Mystic Meg. This is the Mystic Tarot deck. It's very beautiful. I love her artwork. Some of it's very simple and some of it's very complicated. But it's a really nice deck. This is the Piatnik Win. It's a French deck, very colorful, but um, I believe that the artist is actually originally from Spain. Large, heavy deck. Very difficult to handle. This is the Parrot Tarot. I particularly like this one. It's really quite colorful, simple in some aspects, but the cards actually read quite well. And you can see that they do have um, pictures that are easily recognizable. A 
I'm very fond of Egyptian tarot. And this is an Egyptian tarot deck that has some really lovely artwork in it. Let's just call it the Egyptian tarot. Interestingly, the tarot of Nefertari, or Nefertiti, excuse me, is the exact same deck, only the pictures are reversed and it's totally gilded. This is just a beautiful, beautiful deck. I don't use it very often. I love the artwork though. This is the Pappas Tarot. That's quite popular. It's been around for a very long time. Bohemian. Nice deck in hand. Nice slick feel. It's a, uh, The feel of it is an awful lot like my other favorite tarots. Stuart Kaplan. This is the Yukio Tarot. I just love this deck. It is just absolutely beautiful. The images are like um, Japanese paintings. Just lovely. This is another Stuart Kaplan deck. This is the Tarot of Tan Transition. And again, it's another Egyptian deck. The pictures are a little bit more simplistic, but the artwork is still quite lovely. And again, it's another very easy to handle deck. This is a Egyptian deck also, the Egyptian Tarot, but it's a French deck. You can kind of tell by the arcane images in it. The artwork is very nice, reminiscent of 13th, 14th century. This is an interesting deck here. This is the Hoi Polloi. <laughs> this is from the 70s. I don't use this deck very much. It's more of an art type deck. And the cards aren't very slick now, after many years of use. This is a Scapini deck. Medieval Scapini. Again, another arcane artwork. But it is beautiful. And a large deck. This is one of my very favorites. I hope you can see this. Um, this is all Masonic symbolism. And they did this for a reason, to make it recognizable and uh, for intrigue, but the Masonic Tarot is probably one of the most beautiful tarots I've ever seen. Absolutely lovely. The images and the coloration on it are just very dynamic, lovely, and a very big deck, but it's pretty easy to handle, surprisingly. Santa Fe Tarot. Let's turn it around see if it's up. Yes. This seems to be a popular deck. I actually have not used this one for a reading yet. It doesn't have um, typical images in it. However, it does have the typical four suits, so it could be easily read. That's a lovely deck. This is the Tavaloni Stairs of Gold, another very popular deck. Gorgeous artwork, a little bit crazy, but um, I've used this one quite a bit. has a nice feel to it. And here's a fun little deck. It only comes in the uh, Major Arcana. It's called Tarot for Cats. I love cats. And so I was really intrigued by the um, images in this fun deck. Very pretty and very colorful. Not real practical for the way I like to do cards, though. Anyway, um, if anybody has an interest in any of these decks or have a deck that um, you'd like to ask me about, I have probably another hundred decks. I've collected them for many years, and um, I would be open to any kind of questions. They're always welcome. Uh, I'd like to carry along on this line, possibly, and uh, maybe go into more detail about reading the cards. Uh, maybe some spreads, give you an idea of some of the uh, common spreads you might see and how the cards correlate. So if you do have an interest and you want to send me an uh, email message, that would probably inspire me to continue along this line, give me a good reason to do it. But I want to thank you for watching my video.